crying out loud jokes if you work on Lucian every Thursday. Make another mod. I'm not making another mod. Not at the moment. But, you know, this one will do for now. Um, okay. More questions. Right, hang on. You've done so much for this province. They should rename it for you. Name Rim? Oh, I quite like that one, Bard. I like that one. Narusa Rim. Joseph Rim. Steve Rim. You could do something with the sweet roll line, though, since you have set up for the when the dragonborn is baking slash cooking. Say, say name. Say Joseph. While you're at it, I don't suppose you could make me some sweet rolls. Mm, interesting idea. Interesting idea. I like that. What do I think is a better name for your Frost Knight? Alucard, Jack, or Gerewolf? What is a Frost Knight? A knight who uses frost magic, I guess. Uh, I think Alucard fits nicely. Hello, walking existential dread. You have missed very little. Uh, but I was just reminding everyone about my general request for ideas. Um, ideas for ways for Lucian to use the player's name in conversation that feels natural. So natural ways. Because the problem is, I can put, you know, I can put the player's name on the end of any of these lines. You know, you look great at orange, Stephen. But a lot of the time when you do that, it feels shoehorned in. It feels like you've just tacked the name on the end for no reason. Because it's not often in conversation we naturally use each other's names. So, um... So we need to, it's, you know, it's, it's not the most straightforward thing. It's not just think of any line and put the name on the end. It's got to feel more natural than that. And it's hard to pin down why some feel more natural than others. They just do. Um, but yeah. So it's tricky. But any thoughts you have will be appreciated. Do I already have some lines like, look, there's a cave. Should we go inside? No, I don't have any. I don't know how they do the cave detection thing. I need to look that up. I don't really know how that's done. Uh, I don't know whether it's a story manager thing or whether it's a quest that I can't, that you can only use if you're on the vanilla follower framework. I'll need to find out. Like that, for instance, you get that effect uh, with the uh, friendly fire. Friendly fire dialogue, unless I do some clever scripting, if I want to hook into the vanilla friendly fire mechanic, I can only do that by adding Lucy into a vanilla quest, uh, which will then cause him to conflict with any other follower mods that do the same thing. Um, so some things are fiddly like that. Hey, Spacebound! Welcome to the stream. Dover Steve, Dover Steve, oh, he wants to leave. Doesn't Kaiden say something when you're near a cave? Possibly. Hi, Alexander. Where shall we go, Alexander? Alexander, let's go there. Alexander, Alexander. What shall we Alexander today? Thanks for the subspace bound. Most lovely of you to subscribe. Always very appreciated. Very, very highly appreciated. That probably makes more sense. Right, anyway, so where did we get to last time? We were doing dialogue to interactions for the various items you can get in the Saints and Seducers plugin. And we got as far down as the green butterfly in a jar. So if I fire up UESP... Why is that in my head? So we have got that line, Nix, but not with the name on the end. And I'm just not sure about whether that sounds... Well, someone will have to change Greg. You know, whether that sounds like you're forcing a name onto the end of the sentence. You know, if I were talking to my brother, for instance, I don't think I would say, well, one of us will have to change, James. You know, I just wouldn't... I wouldn't put that on the end. Maybe it's me overthinking it. Maybe any line is fine. I don't know. Now, what do you think is a great opportunity to put the name on the end? So that's a good shout, Ace. If I say, what do you think, James? That sounds a lot more, na that sounds natural. So possibly. D 
Oh, I see what you mean. One of us will have to change. Greg. <clears throat> or as a cough sort of... <clears throat> Greg. You could use that for some good passive aggression. Right, so we did the green butterfly in a... No, did we? How far did we get? We had purple butterfly. So we got in a jar. Green butterfly and purple butterfly in a jar we had. Bliss bug in a jar. So we're onto the Sheogorath shaped amber. Sheogorath shaped amber. Also, I feel like Greg is now going to become a meme. For the server. I don't know where this Greg has come from. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right, um, okay, so now we want a line about the Sheogorath shaped amber. And I'm going to bring that up so we can see the information about it. Yeah, so I've already got a uh, Greg, help line in combat. Oh no, not Lord Bibliotech Bard. Now, I don't think this amber is shaped very much like Sheogorath. It's a face. I don't know what makes that Sheogorath's face rather than anyone else's face. The Greg bits. I do remember, well, vaguely, I remember that being a thing. You must go to the High Hrothgar and speak with the Greg bits. The Sheogorath shaped amber is an unusually shaped piece of amber which bears some resemblance to the Daedric Prince Sheogorath. It can be found at Thoron's camp in the Solitude Sewers. Bum, 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 bum. Now let's just check what the quest is. Starter's quest. You can give her. The Shagroth shaped amber, the sword of Jigalag, or neither. Oh, that's a good idea, Ace. I like that. Well, the problem, the problem with that, Ace, is no one actually says in the game that this is Shergorath shaped amber. The item is called Shergorath shaped amber, but I don't believe anyone ever refers to it as being shaped like Shergorath. So, I don't know why Lucian would make a point of saying this doesn't look like Shergorath. <laughs> hmm, this mug doesn't look anything like Shergorath. Do <laughs> you know? Oh, I quite like that bard. I don't like the look this amber is giving me. Sort of frowny and disapproving. Reminds me of my aunt Sylvia. Yeah, there's the deep Flavius law coming back. Right now, what do we think this one's going to be called? Um, we'll have to find out. Ah, oh no, amber. I want sheer Gorath shaped amber. Ah, well, these are all questions. That's a very good question, Yami. Aunt Sylvia, which side of the family? We, d we just don't know. 
That's the thing. She's only been mentioned once before. With the stone flesh. When Lucian was speculating whether it would turn his heart to stone as well. And how that reminds him of his Aunt Sylvia. So we don't know anything about her. We don't know whose sister she is. But, uh, there you go. So you're learning so much lore lately. Stuff about Lucian's aunt. Stuff about Dave the Thief's secret past. It's all very exciting. I'm looking for CCBG. Uh, did we say it was Advocates? Yes. Advocates. Greg the Saviour of Tamriel. We will Greg up all the bad guys in Skyrim. I think that sounds a little bit strange. We'll Greg them up. Hmm. But I, I like, but, you know, I get the concept. There's definitely something we can do with that. Yep, she's mentioned, as I say, with the stone flesh line. That's where, where Sylvia comes in. No, I don't check because I've never specified where Sylvia lives. So we know Lucian has at least one cat. And at least one aunt called Sylvia. There's your info. Right, I am looking for misc item. Sheogorath shaped amber, and this is called Amber Oddity. Ground control the mage dumb. Shut your Sawyer's hatch and put your helmet on. Imagine if he has two Aunt Sylvia's. Oh, that's my other Aunt Sylvia, and Sylvia Flavius is a darling. Maybe Aunt Sylvia doesn't actually exist. Maybe it's a uh, memory-altering Daedra that's insinuated itself into the Flavius' lives and is one day going to follow Lucian to Skyrim and they'll have an epic battle. And he'll come to realise that she isn't actually his aunt and he, she never actually existed. And uh, by facing his fears and through force of will, then, um, then he'll be able to overcome, you know, the illusion and free himself. Or, or maybe that will never happen. What if Clive is Aunt Sylvia? What if they're the same metaphysical entity? <sighs> Such conspiracy. What a theory. ING Iguana no Gordon. Iguana named Gordon. That's what that one stands for. <laughs> Perfectly normal aunt. <laughs> Boom. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, you probably don't have that in the US, do you? That's the EastEnders theme, which doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really help here. Um... <laughs> That's how Clive flies the plane, exactly. <laughs> oh, we do have fun. Immortal never-ending Greg. Never ending, Greg. Ah, it's Greg. I'm thrilled that you do get up that early on Thursdays for me, Ace. It's most appreciated. Right, let's do a line for the player holding the amber now. Amber is most peculiar. Definitely rather face-like, wouldn't you say? And also, is that a hint of magicka?
and faintest whiff of cheese. Aunt Sylvia isn't actually his aunt. She showed up one day, Lyra thought she was Davidicus' sister, and Davidicus assumed she was Lyra's sister. <laughs> yes, she is Lyra, yeah. Oh, that would be a funny... Si that's, that's a very British awkward situation. Isn't it? And just neither of them ever... Uh, they're, never them, they always feel too awkward and uncomfortable to ever actually ask whose sister is she. Oh, very fun. That, that's bizarre. I like that. Hey, Yellow Ego Cat. Yes, we are still on Saints and Seducers. Hello, Pencil Mystic. Oh, gosh, writing in capitals. Is that a hint of magic? Or I detect! There we go. That's more like it. I know, a rock that smelled of cheese would be bizarre. That that is a is a deep cut theory, Butane. Never ending story. Ah. Rocks that smell of sulfur, amber that smells of cheese. Oh, now here's a point. I didn't actually figure out whether or not it was possible to implement the books, the book reading from this. Maybe. Maybe. And if we were to, the books would be Heretical Thoughts, Saints and Seducers, and The Blessings of Shea Gorath. Because all the rest are journals, we don't generally read journals. Um, so Saints and Seducers, it's a long book. That would be a lot of recording. Heretical Thoughts is much shorter. That works better. Blessings of Sheogoroth is much shorter. But if we we're going to do one, we might as well do all three. I don't know. What do you think? Would you be interested? Do you think I should... Let's do a poll. Because you guys know I have a finite amount of time. And if I'm working on one thing, I'm not working on another thing. So it's always a matter of priorities. Would you like me to spend time recording these books for Lucian to read you out loud? Or would you... Would you are you not bothered? Would you rather I spent the time on something else? Um, let's do this poll. Should I... Record these books. Yes or no? You have got... Oh, I'll give you five minutes to think about it. Um, let me know. What do you think? Do you want me to? Or would you rather I worked on something else with that time? You should be able to vote in that poll now above the chat. Uh, in the meantime, let's look at what else we can implement. Um, we aren't doing the conjure spells because they're all conjuring Daedra and Lucian's never going to be comfortable conjuring Daedra. The notes we can skip. We could have comments on the player having Dark Seducers and Golden Saints with them. What, what, wait, why does Lucian get a pain stick? Do, 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 do. So the chat seems to be leaning in favour of no. That's good to know. Wouldn't want to waste my time recording them if that's something that you guys don't want. So, the spells. Player spells. Your dark seducer keep friend keeps looking at me strangely. It's making me that no, keeps staring. It's making me awfully uncomfortable I thought you were going to hum the Wii theme how does 
the Wii theme go? Because I know the me the me channel theme. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 do 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 da 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 do da do da do da do 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 I'm learning this on the keyboard. Uh, I should be able to play it for you sometime. Da 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 bum 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 bum. Now get magic effects. Get sp uh. What's the condition? Let's look it up. Creation kit check magic effect condition. Do 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 da 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 la 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 uh, yes, getting 12 people together to play ESO would be highly unlikely, check. But, um... But good, I'm glad it was fun. Maybe it has magic effect. Yeah! Run on player. CCBG. Summon Dark Seducer Archer and Warrior. Either of those is fine. Have I learned finger independence on the keyboard? What do you mean by finger independence? I can play more than one note at the same time. If that's what you're asking. But it sounds like that's a special thing. Bum ba ba da 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 um, what else can we say? Finger independence comes after the finger revolution. Using both hands simultaneously. Yes, I can play piano with both hands. I learned piano as a uh, as a child. I had piano lessons um, when I was younger. It's just recently that I've started uh, getting into it again. Hence the keyboard. So it looks like no one. So we will leave the books for now. Shan't bother recording those. Thanks for your opinion, people. Right, something else for the dark for Lucian to say about the player's dark seducer friend. What ESO chapters slash DLCs do I have? Um. Morrowind. I think. I think that's it. <laughs> now let me just check. What does this actually do? Dark Seducer, Warrior, and Archer. I assume they're always female, aren't they? Yeah. Also known as the Mazken. I didn't know that. Keep an eye. Hey, Turbo Topology. Pencil Mystic. 
Uh, how exactly does Lucian's approval system work? Is it a quest with different stages for different levels of approval or some kind of variable that gets referenced maybe? Okay, so my implementation of Lucian's approval is rubbish. Uh, but I can't change it because it's um, it's how I set it up at the time before I fully understood the CK. Um, it is a variable in a script which I've set to conditional, which allows you to access it from other scripts. So it's a conditional variable in a script. Don't do it like that. I have it as a conditional variable in a script and I have a function, a script function that I can call to increase or decrease it. So at various points when you finish particular quests with Lucian, well, it's whenever he makes comments that advance these particular things, um, I can tell it to increase or decrease approval. Same for bravery. Um, they're two independent variables, uh, which are script variables. Much better would be to make it a global variable instead. So if you're thinking of doing this yourself, have a global variable uh, and reference that, because then you don't need to mess around with scripts and setting them to conditional. Uh, just just don't bother, just have a global variable and you can access it much more easily. Um, so yeah, do that. Uh, but yeah, it's a number. It's a number that goes up and goes down, uh, and I tell it to go up and go down when you when you reach particular milestones with Lucian. And then the lines are conditioned depending on the value of that number. Keep an eye on your dark seducer. The Mazken aren't known for their loyalty, according to UESP, anyway. Their allegiances are known to be flimsy. So there we go. And we'll do a couple of the Golden Saints as well. Don't throw Lucian in the sea. That would stress him out. Right, Golden Saints on the other hand. The Oriel. Humanoid. They are proud. They are very intelligent and generally hostile. They are proud, arrogant rays who are quick to anger and cruel in their punishment. I wish your golden saint would stop looking down her nose at me. He likes Doomsbathar. That wouldn't be much punishment for his crimes. Oh, and I'll maybe take away the fear emotion for that previous line. Golden Saint, Golden Saint, Golden Saint, Golden Saint, does whatever a Golden Saint does. What's their favourite artistic material? It's paint for the Golden Saint. Look out, here comes the Golden Saint. Fly me to Secunda, let me play among the star under. Doesn't really work. Your golden saint is awfully mean for someone so shiny. Oh, that's true. Moon and stars doesn't rhyme, does it? Exactly. Fly me to Secunda. Let me play among the Magnagi. 
Let me see what. What's spring in Skyrim? First seed is like. When I say yip yippee. Who would play Lucian in a movie? Me! Trust me. I'll be great. Call my agent. Which may or may not look suspiciously like me. Just wearing a hat. And a fake moustache. Well, hello, I'm Joseph Russell's agent. I hear you want to put him in a movie. Do they just call it spring? Fair enough. First seed is a month. I don't know these things. What do you think I am? Some kind of scholar? Hey, Rose Thorn. Welcome to the stream. Yes, his... How did you know that, Nuna? My agent's name is Hosebja. Why is he a cowboy? I don't know. That's a bit of a personal question, isn't it? To ask him? I'm not a cowboy. I'm, I'm an agent. From, from Hollywood. Uh, we could have one for Starda. For the unique Starda. Hello, 2Ds! Welcome to the stream! Greetings and salutations unto you. May the blessings of Sheer Gorath go with you. I have more than one American accent. I can also do you... Um... Oh my god! Oh my god, I was at Chad's house the other day, uh, for his, for his, uh, frat party. And, and he was like, oh my god, uh, you, you, uh, you and, you and I, do you want to go to a movie? And I was like, oh my god, Chad, no way. And then, and then Chad was like, was like, uh, that's a shame, but I'll respect your wishes. And I was like, good. And that was that. So, uh, so there you go. I've got that as well. And those are my American accents. <laughs> I don't know what what that is, Yellow Ego Cat. Sorry. I literally can't even and such and like this is just like so and such and I can't even and I just literally cannot You get me? Wait, you get me. That's chav. That's pretty chav now. You get me, bruv. You get me. You get me. You get me. You get me. Do you get me? You get me. Am I familiar with foil arms and hog? Doom da. Yes, that is how Aunt Sylvia talks. That's canon. Why not? Such is my power. Thanks for the bits, Yami. Most appreciated. I mean, I don't know them personally, I'd like to stress. I've seen and enjoyed some of their videos. I find them very entertaining. We're, we're not- we're not mates. I don't go out for coffee with them, or anything. Just all three, just foil arms and hog. That that doesn't happen. I'm sorry, um, but they seem like nice guys. Actually, I think uh, I think Aunt Sylvia probably sounds a little bit like this. What's all this then, Lucian? I think you're here wasting your time and all these books and this adventuring when you should be getting yourself a proper job in the world. Have you considered retraining in cyber? It's all the rage in this current economy. When I was your age, I was already married with 15 children.
and I'd bought a house. And we didn't have any of your funny little modding computer games. Oh no, that's that's the real world. But but yes. <laughs> Alternatively, you can have Aunt Sylvia with my engineering voice like this, which would say, "Excuse me, young Master Lucian, but actually you haven't properly remembered." to add your integration constant at the end of that equation, and if you don't put the plus C, then I think you'll find that it's going to have one consistent systematic error applying all through your system that will result in your automaton functioning non-optimally. Don't you know? I would like to stress I don't actually have an Aunt Sylvia, so, so no, 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 this is Lucian's Aunt Sylvia. <laughs> Uh. Where C is an arbitrary constant. Uh, nothing's happening, Bard. Nothing of any of any sense. You need me to do a Lonely Worlds audiobook? I would love to do a Lonely Worlds audiobook. It's just finding the time to do it. Hydrate certainly will. Posture check certainly will. Right, what can we say about Starder? Now, I believe you can only learn to summon her if you kill her. Right? No. No. If you keep the Sheogorath shaped amber, then you can learn to summon her. So, no. You can't only learn to summon her if you kill her. If you give her the sword, keep the amber, then you can use the amber to learn the summon spell. So no, that doesn't work. I was speaking math. Or maths, as we say in the UK. Because we can cope with more than one of them. Oh, really? You have to give her the sword, otherwise she tries to kill you. So you get the option for both the amber and the sword. Oh, sorry, no, right, okay, yeah, so if you give her the sword, then she goes away, and then you keep the amber, and you can use the summon. Marine, but you're obviously handling half a math quite well because you understand fractions there, clearly. You know, so that's a good start. Fractional math. Bard can only handle zero math. Well, I can handle on minus one maths. So there. Have you ever handled negative maths? What about imaginary maths? to check. Thank you, Avery. Hope you're doing well. Um, okay. So now we can just assume that she's told Lucy in her name. Starder. I really don't think Starder likes me. Because I think we're I think we're assuming that Starda is capable of saying her name, and that Lucian and Starda would talk off camera. Dungeons and Dragons math can be tricky, anxious Ace. So don't don't uh, you know don't dismiss that. You know you've that those dice have a lot of dots on them. It's difficult. I mean, you don't have to, Yami. You don't have to use any of these patches if you don't want to. They're optional plugins. You can still, 
you know, use version 1.6.0 quite happily without Saints and Seducers. I really think Starter could do with a nice afternoon by a fire with a cup of tea and a good book. Works wonders for me when I'm that grumpy. I'll change this one to being sad. I really don't think Starter likes me. Must have all the plugins. <laughs> well, that's entirely up to you. But you'll always still get a perfectly complete story without having the optional Lucian plugins. Save. Always have to save. You should install Moonpath to elsewhere, though. That one's great. Thoroughly recommend. I really enjoyed doing the Lucy and Moonpath to elsewhere interactions. They were a lot of fun. That really gave me the bug for doing these plugins. It's just very satisfying ticking off all the things in the mod or the DLC or whatever. Just going through the list and doing comments on everything. Oh, I mean, if it's free, you should definitely pick up the DLC whenever it's free. You know, it's worth having. Better having than not having. And yeah, you get the options. Yes, you have to download the plugin separately. So on the uh, on the Lucian page, if you go onto the Lucian page, you'll see a list of all the mods that he interacts with. Um, and uh, the ones with the asterisks, you need to download the optional plugin for. The ones with no asterisks are included within the mod, but it's this kind of... This kind of quest commentary, I can't do without an optional plugin. I I need to uh, I need to have a optional patch for it. Uh, my patch list system allows me to recognise NPCs, and it allows me to recognise um, uh, enemy types and locations. But that's it. I can't I can't comment on quests with that system. Oh, are you using my uh, Moonpath to Elsewhere Bruma plugin, Rainstorm Wonder? If you're going through Bruma to get there. See, that was inspired by the Lord of the Rings Online that made me do that. And I always use that in my playthrough. Because I love that idea of travelling from one place, you know, across the world to the other. That sort of sense of geography. I really enjoy that. So I made it for myself, really. But I'm glad people still like it. Right, so we've done lines about Starder. We've done lines about... Okay, about the summonable Daedra. So now we want lines... No, I haven't touched Lotro in ages either. But I spent hours and hours and hours, days in Lotro when I was younger. Yay for geography, exactly. Just a general yay for the concept of spatial positioning of things. Yes, Mazakin, that's a normal feature. So, uh, yeah, I, I just put in a bit of code just for fun. That every five minutes in the game, there was a small chance of Lucian randomly attacking everyone around him. Um, it's just the immersive uh, mental breakdown simulator. That's what that is. Um, so enjoy. Hey, Daedric Mistress Void. Welcome to the stream. Uh, if you give him a sweet roll, he'll come down. Right, so let's do some combat taunts now for these specific uh, enemy types. Hmm. <laughs> 
you really don't seem as... Oh no, hang on. How did I ascertain whether they were saints, bandits or not? Get in faction. Saint seduces bandit faction. Oh yeah, and you're wearing this armor. Great. So if I delete these conditions, I can then copy all and then I can cancel and that should keep the original condition stack. And now I have a condition stack to check whether the enemy is a saint. Uh, Mazikan, if you're if you're actually asking for help, reload your save. Just just reload a save from before the fighting started. Skyrim's AI can go funky sometimes. You saints. No, um, you really don't seem as saintly as your name implies. There you go. That's one random line for these are just general random lines now for when battling saints. Oh, and they need to be on a cooldown, of course. Did I set appropriate cooldowns for the other lines? Yep, they'll all only trigger only once every 24 hours, except for the Ring of Undressing that he'll give back every time you give it to him. And all of these can only happen once, so we don't need to worry about the cooldowns on any of these anyway. That is a very random fact, Daedric Mistress Void. Glad he got better, Mazakan. So at what point am I supposed to, so at what point here is the dark seduction supposed to start? And I stress this is when he's fighting them. Shadow Mir is a perfectly normal horse. And this is for the seducer, the seducer bandits, actually. So I'll just go with... Oh, no, that just sounds a bit weird if I don't... Uh. So if your seducers... At what point here is the seduction supposed to start? That makes it clear that this is a line about the seducer bandits and not, uh, not just generally Lucian coming onto a bandit. Um, right. Clive Mir. Shadow Clive. Shadow Clive. Sounds spoopy. Shadow Greg. <laughs> Ah, that line's better, actually. Ah, 
I don't know much about seduction. But I'm pretty sure you're doing it wrong. That's a better line. Thank you, Nuna. I'm afraid no amount of spooky Daedric armor is going to save you. It's going to save you now. Right as rain. Left as snow. Makes a lot more sense. Hmm. Thanks for the bits, Yami. Can you have undead Daedra? I don't know, can you? I mean, the bone men are um are sort of they're definitely skeletal and they're daedric in nature. But yeah, they don't die, so but I think they count as undead as far as the game's concerned anyway. That's one angry Lucian gamer, Victor. The real golden saints are far more impressive. You're just playing dress up. And on this one, I'm going to put a bravery check. So for those of you who are wondering how the bravery system works, I'm going to do get VM quest variable. JR Lucian follower. Approve bravery underscore var. And I'm going to say that that has to be greater than, let's go with 30. And if it is, then Lucian will use this name. This name? This line. Because it requires a certain amount of, you know, guts. To be quite that confident, I think. Um, cool! Um, right, so we did a couple of lines for the Saints Bandits and a couple of lines for the Seducers Bandits. So let's have some Saints and actual actual Saints and actual Seducers. Uh, some lines for these. Um, okay, uh, let's do, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's do an attack line. Saints and Seducers attack. 10 out of 10 was not frightened. Well, I'm glad I'm not frightening. I try. I try to be nice and friendly. 
go back to the Shivering Isles. Run on combat targets. Get is race. Is it race? Yes, Golden Saint or Dark Seducer. And what is that, of course? Golden Saint Race. <laughs> Actually got a sensible name. Good. CCBG Golden Saint Race or... Dark Seducer Race. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 ba -dum, bum. Oh, of course, this needs to be flagged as random. And it needs to only repeat once every 24 hours. Uh, and I might add a get random percent condition onto that. To reduce how often it plays. And we might set that down to, I don't know, mm, 33. So it plays a third of the time. And we'll try that. We can always tweak it to determine whether it needs increasing or decreasing or whatever, because it's all a bit of trial and error, really, with these things. I have Fanta, by the way. Sweet, sweet, orangey sugar drink. Give me a bit of a boost. It's been a long day. Could do with the sugar. It's been a long week. Which I'm sure is a mood for many of you. I'm glad you like those, Marine. So, the Conjuration scene is inspired, and it's very niche, but the Conjuration scene is inspired by The Trap Door, which was a TV show on in the UK. I think it was late 90s? Stop motion. And I had the VHS box set thing or maybe it's just one vhs with just a few episodes basically i had it when i was a kid and that has a scene in it was it 80s not 90s okay maybe it was 80s that has a scene in it with bony which is a talking skull who talks a bit like this and all the lights are turned out for some reason and he's describing this tentacled thing coming at him and he's like oh no put me down 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 and I was, when I wrote that little conjuration scene, I was 100% channeling that. That's what it was. It was that scene. That's where that creative juice came directly from. So a little bit of creative deep lore for you there. That's my take on the trapdoor. But I love the fade to black format of um, those training scenes because it means you can play, you know, you can play around so much with stuff that the game doesn't let you. You know, it was, um, uh, yes, it was the Creepy Crawly Adventures VHS. I think that's the one. Uh, although I'm not sure, actually. That rings a bell, that name. Anyway, but yes, so, um, yeah, well, you can, with, <laughs> there's so much potential for comedy when you take away the visual element and you can just describe what's happening. Uh, I love it. And I think it's very effective in audio drama, um, radio plays, that sort of thing, and I love that the training scenes give me a bit of potential to do some of that nonsense. Um, so there we go. Right, so, go back to the Shivering Isles. What, what else do we know about the saints and the seducers? See the lore article for the dark seducers, the Mazken. They are the spawn of Sheogorath. Notoriously clanless and treacherous, owing allegiance to many Daedric princes such as Meirin's Dagon. Bum, 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 bum. Right, okay. Let 
We can do another one. We can do one for when they are on low health. Get actor value percent on the combat target of health. And we'll set that to be less than 20, which means this is probably going to be something close to a finishing blow. Give Sheogorath my regards. Or our regards. And I might make this happy and cheerful. No, you are Mazakan. Mazakan is this Daedra. Oh, there was a question. Um... Uh, okay, so Ace, what I was getting at there with the whole real seducers thing was that um, I'm assuming that he knows about them from books. Basically. I mean, if you think I need to... Oh, Grey is awake! If you think I need to tweak that and condition it so that he's seen, um, you know, that we've progressed through the quest, I can do that. But my thinking there was that he'd be familiar with what real seducers are like academically. Does that make sense? Yeah. Come say hi to everyone. Ooh. Here she is. I'll go big so that you can see. She's been sleeping. But now she awakes. She wishes to greet you. Hey. She's very soft, can confirm, by the way. For those of you wondering what she actually feels like, she feels like absolute maximum softness. Little bundle of soft, and she holds onto my arm, and the little claws just dig in, just like that. And that's quite sharp. <laughs> right, now, do you want some treats? Do you? If you hold still, I can get you some. Look. Look at this. Ooh, is this of interest? Are these of interest? Hold still, stop struggling. Look. Now, if you jump off, you won't get any. She got places to be. Let's put them there so you can see. These are tuna flavour. Heavenly tuna. Apparently. Right, you. You coming up again? Here, look, treats. Does Grey have flowers on her collar? Yes, she does. Because they're pretty. She is just floof, isn't she? <laughs> She's very small. She's seven now. So she's middle-aged. Yeah? Wanna say hi to everyone again? Where are you off? Oh, she's gone. There we go. She may well come back at some point. I need a haircut. I have to see if I can persuade James to do it at some point in the next few days. You love my Lucians. Which Lucians? I have only one. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da -da. No amount of spooky daedric armor is going to save you now. Give Shia Gorath our regards. Oh, Mazakon's Lucian's in a sketch. Ah, that's what you're talking about. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that in a bit. Oh, uh, yeah, they do. Tiny Lucian will multiply unless you, um, unless you set the behavior to not multiply. Uh, which you can do somewhere. Can't remember where. No, not like that. Uh, there is a setting somewhere where you can set him to not multiply. <laughs> it might be in the config for Shimiji.
Right, if I copy this line and I move it across back to the taunts. So what might he want to ask a Mazken? Any ideas, people? Feel free to suggest stuff. What might he want to ask or say to the seducers? They're charged with dementia, with guarding dementia. So you could ask them about that. So what's dementia like then? Is it as spooky as it looks in the pictures? Is it as spooky as the books say? Any thoughts? No? Aren't you cold in that outfit? Do Daedra even get cold? I like this line. Whose line was just... This was Shadow Wolves. Shadow Wolves and Ace being combined together here. Aren't you cold in outfit? Did Daedra even get cold? That must be handy. In winter. So tell me, is it true that the rain in Mania falls mainly, mainly on the plane? Yeah. It's the, it's the sort of nonsense that we have. Speech 100. And we don't need to think too much about that line. Or what the original might even be, because obviously Spain doesn't exist in Skyrim. We don't need to think about that. We're just going to go with the funny line. So what about Mania? Mania.
Yeah, you can hear Gray's little bell in the background. True. Which is lovely now. Not so helpful when I'm recording uh, dialogue. <laughs> but there we go. Um, if you hear any jingling in the background of Lucian's lines in 1.6.0, that's what it is. Um, I've got a half, I, the line's sort of cooking, gestating in my brain here. I'm not quite sure of the exact form of it, but what I want to say is roughly something like, um, I'm sure, thanks for the bits, Rainstorm Wonder. Um, you really don't need to, um, hmm, no, how am I, am I trying to phrase, phrase it? Um, what I'm trying to get at is they don't need to worry about overcompensating with their armor. I'm sure they have a lovely personality. Um, ah, right, Grey wants to go. Or does she? No, nope, she's changed her mind. What do you think? Do you want to go or not? Nope. I'm sure... Nah, I can't quite, I can't quite get the line right. I can't quite figure out the wording. I'm trying to say... <sighs> Don't you think all that gold is just a smidge much? I'm sure you have a lovely personality. No need to overcompensate. Yeah, it might need work, but I'm I'm that's what I'm trying to get at. I think we've already got the one line about Mania A, so I don't think we necessarily need to have two there because then it might get slightly repetitive. Um <laughs> Ma'am, you're very shiny. Yeah, we had the rain in Mania falls mainly on the plane That armor must take a lot of polishing. Or does Mummy do it for you? Hey Sacralicious, welcome to the stream. Shout out to Daedric Mist from Daedric Mistress Void to Daedric Mistress Void for being chill while their cats are 163 miles by car away from them. And yes, oh snap, with this line. I know, I know, pot. Kettle. Black. Hmm. 
couldn't resist though. See ya, Ice Julia. Oh, no, not Ice Julia. Sorry, it's Rainstorm. See ya, Rainstorm Wonder. Have fun wandering in the rainstorm. Cross check. Thank you, Armiter. Right, so you now want to go, do you? No? Still not quite. Are you? Are you? No? No, she's just, just creating attention. Shout out from Mazikin to Lucian for trying to set their house on fire when all they wanted was to give him a sweet roll. Well, everyone has off days. Yo, Avira. Who's Avira? Oh, you're a Vera. I might think I think I might get rid of this Ember actually and just leave it as all. Does Mummy do it for you? I think the old snap moment's nice. Well, let him have that. Okay. What else we've we got? We've done the Golden Saints. We've done the Bandits. So what we have left now is the Spriggans and the Elytra Nymphs. So we have Corrupted Spriggans. And we have the Nymphs, the Elytra. So we'll do the Spriggans first. You really don't look healthy. Poor thing. For the corrupted Spriggan. So this is going to be corrupted Spriggan race dementia or mania. Yes, thanks, Nuna. If we could avoid swearing, that would be great. Because that is in my rules. No, oh, cat snores. So we have... The demented and the and the manic, which are green and orange, and look like that, and look like that. Right now, she wants to go. Come on, then you. And just like that, she slips away into the night. I think that's probably all he needs to say about the Manic Spriggans, really. Um, unless anyone thinks of anything else that might be worth him commenting on. But otherwise, we can go straight to the Elytra. Do they have a lore page? She is, she's very busy. She's got very important duties to attend to. Mm. 
Now, what did we say about the original ones? In the cages. Which you should encounter first. He does know that they're elytras. Okay. He knows what an elytra is, which was slightly narratively inconsistent with Lucy and the Dragonborn, where he didn't. But, you know... Maybe in this alternate universe, Lucian's read slightly more about them. Sleep is important. Do sleep. Hand wavy magic. What do you mean hand wavy? That wasn't hand wavy at all! Maybe, maybe, Nuna. These things. Ah. Uh. Revolting, and yet, no, but they're, they're both, both, both revolting and uh, amazing and fascinating. Actually, I think you would marvel at their beauty more than at how revolting they are. I think there's, what did he say again? Let's check one more time. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have fascination going on here. These things are beautiful. Horrible, of course. And far too vicious. And far too vicious for my liking. But beautiful. Hello, good day, Mr. Video Freak. Or in French, Monsieur Video Freak. As they say. Ah, they like to lay their eggs inside you. Lovely. That's fun. We can do something with that. Did you know these things like to lay their eggs inside their victims? Just thought it was worth... <laughs> Food for thought. They use deadly poisons to kill their prey, which if gone unchecked, venom can slay the average man over a period of hours. Growing and feeding on the host body for a few days, the hatchlings will emerge. Lovely. They're in the uh, Saints and Seducers DLC. They are not Daedra. Or are they? They're native to the Shivering Isles. It doesn't specify them as being Daedra, 
but one would assume if they're from Oblivion, then they probably are Daedra, right? Does that make sense? I don't know what the distinction is. Nowhere on this page does it say the word Daedra. Hmm, hard to know. Hello, Liam the Lucky. Oh, there once was a hero named Liam the Lucky here on this stream, and they seemed rather plucky. Apparently, Elytra are known for their gentle potential. Are known for their gentle nature. Don't think anyone told this one. The books say Elytra are known for their gentle nature. Apparently, nobody told this one. There we go. Ground control to Major Bean. A very happy bean. Major is just a very, very happy bean. And I think that's it. What do you think? Here's the list. Here are all the things in Saints and Seducers. Ah, we haven't done the Solitude, Solitude Sewers. We haven't actually commented on these, apart from the one uh, quest-related line from when you go down into them, which was... Well, here we are. These are some, these are some sewers, and they are beneath the solitude, and they smell delightful. And we say, "Goodness me, this is remarkable!" So when you get to the root network, but I can't detect whether you're currently in the root bit or not. Hmm. But I can detect whether Lucian said this line or not. So I can say, if you're in the cell, Root Dungeon, and get stage done 150, then you can comment. Uh, so we'll do get in cell. CCBG Root Dungeon equals 1. Get stage done... J.R. Lucian, uh, uh, CC, Saints and Seducers, 150 equals 1, and then I can set these to random, and I can have a couple of random lines with 24 hour resets that can just play at any time, uh, and we can put, get random percent on these as well, and what might he say? To detect someone is dead or dies while in combat, would it be target? No, it would be combat target. But, um, you can... <sighs> so you can, you can condition on an NPC's current combat target. But you can't detect... I wouldn't know a reliable way to detect a follower dying in combat. You can detect if a follower is dead by uh, doing, you know, uh, just work, doing your condition on a reference. You know, here, you can do... You could do is dead or get dead. Get dead. 
run on reference uh, uh, reference here and you could select Lydia. You could do that. And you'd select Lydia in the world. That would do the job. But uh, Target will be the person who is being spoken to, I believe. Well, no, Target doesn't let you specify something. So Target is the the receiver of the dialogue, which in this in this context with idle dialogue is is nobody. And I think would usually be the player if they're talking to the player. I I'm honest, I'm not really sure when you would use Target. I've never used it. But I think, as I said, I'm pretty sure that's who the who the line is being addressed to. So you'd want get dead, and you'd want to put reference. Right, so. Place is bizarre. It's like part of the Shivering Isles is leaking through into Mundus. Can't imagine that's a good thing. So target and player dialogue would be the player, but target on an idle line, I guess, would be would be null. Because they're not said to anyone. And I guess in a scene where you have one person speaking to another person, would it be the person that's being spoken to? Probably not. That sounds too easy. Hydrate, certainly will. I wonder how exactly this place was brought. I wonder how exactly this place was brought into existence. The root cause, if you will. Get it? Oh, don't bite your tongue. You're supposed to just keep that in your mouth. Don't bite it. Bad. That's true, Nuna. So really, you should keep your tongue somewhere else. Like, in your hand. That's a thought, Ace. Can you imagine if the plane mouth had been with Sheogorath instead of Molagbal. All of Tamriel could have ended up looking like this.
oh, that's interesting, sacrilegious, sacrilegious. Well, I guess that does imply that the idle dialogue is targeted still on the player. So why use target and not just player? You did help, Ace. Well done. And we'll do one more. The flora down here. Yeah, but if it's for the player, you set the target to the player rather than the target. You know, you, you say run this condition on player. You have a whole specific box to tick for player rather than target. So it surprises me that they'd have put it under target rather than under player. If you get what I mean. The floor down here is... Extremely interesting. Never seen anything quite like it. Must be from it must be from uh from Oblivion too. Which is, uh, which is true in two ways, because it's from Oblivion, and it's also from the game Oblivion. So there we go. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's a lot. I think when we've done that, we've covered everything in the mod. In the DLC, except for the write these books, making them readable, which we could possibly do, but would take ages. Would be a lot of work. But apart from that, we've done the whole lot. Which I'm pretty pleased with. So that means next week, because I'm not going to start it now, next week we can do some recording. Maybe we could uh, fire up Cubase, put the pop filter in front, and try and record a bunch of this stuff. And then we'll be good to hopefully have it released at the same time as 1.6.0. I certainly won't release it before 1.6.0 because it'll ping everyone and then they'll all assume that that's 1.6.0 releasing and then they'll be disappointed to see it's this plugin. But I'll release this at the same time as 1.6.0, so it's another thing that you can try. Oh, yeah! Mazakin did a sketch. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I feel like that seems fairly, fairly classic for Skyrim stuff, Sacralicious, isn't it? Nothing's really consistent. Yeah, I'm planning on streaming uh, day more Dave Adventures on Saturday. They are going to be turning our power off again at some point in the next week or so. But hopefully that won't coincide with the Saturday stream. Here's a Mazakin sketch. Hang on, let me just show you guys. Here you are. This is a Lucian mad with power. Hmm. Mazakin seems very unimpressed. He looks like he's having fun, though. He's having a good day. Look at him. He's having the time of his life. Walking existential dread once don't stop me now. Tonight I'm gonna have myself a real good time I feel alive And the world, I'll turn it inside out, yeah I'm floating around in ecstasy So don't stop me now Don't stop me cause I'm having a good time Having a good time. That's too high for me. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to take it down a couple of keys. I'm a shooting star leaping through the sky like a tiger defying the laws of gravity. I'm a racing car passing by like Lady Godiva. I'm going to go, 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 go. There's no stopping me. 
I'm burning through the sky, yeah. 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I'm traveling at the speed of light, oh, I'm gonna make a supersonic man out of you. I'm gonna skip ahead, because we're not gonna do the whole song, because that takes, like, forever. Don't stop me, don't stop me, don't stop me, hey, 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 don't stop me, don't stop me, ooh, 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 don't stop me, don't stop me, have a good time, good time, don't stop me, don't stop me, ah, uh, I'm burning through the sky, yeah, 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit, oh, I'm traveling at the speed of light, oh, I'm gonna make a supersonic man out of you, and it just goes on and on for a bit in there. Yeah, I'm having a good time. I don't wanna stop at all. La da 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 and fade out. It really doesn't work without a backing track, but I hope you enjoyed that anyway. I hope it was worth your fifteen hundred points. Um, I need to try and learn just every song on guitar, just all the songs in the world, get them all on guitar, and then you can request whatever you want and I can just play along and it'll sound great. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work when there's nothing in the background. Um, but there you go. I hope that was mildly entertaining anyway. Right, I'm probably going to sign off there because we're done with the, with the uh, implementation of the mod and I can't, we haven't got time to really start recording now. So I think we'll park it there. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for keeping me company. Thank you for your suggestions. Thank you for being marvellous. Um, I'll be back on Saturday for the uh, more Skyrim gameplay, carrying on the adventures of Dave, the uh, purveyor of legitimate articles. And uh, yes, yeah, so do join in then. Um, and uh, also, uh, I've mentioned this a few times, but you know, uh, on my YouTube channel, I have a secondary YouTube channel now, which is Joseph Russell Live. And on that channel, I have archives of every live stream I've ever done. So if you want to catch up on all the Dave streams or any other stream that's happened in the past, all the old games that were like Gone Home, Stardew Valley, uh, the early Minecraft streams, all the stuff we haven't played for a while, do check out that channel and sub to it and watch the videos if you want. Um, they're all in a lot higher quality than you can get on Twitch and they go all the way back rather than just a month. So yeah, uh, that's all from me. Have a great one. See you all again soon. Bye bye.